It's Amanda again with Unhinged Magazine and Curve Magazine this time because we're here with Sarah Peacock, an award-winning singer-songwriter of the Americana genre. Her latest album, Burn the Witch, was released just last month amidst all of the chaos with the COVID-19. Um, so tell us a little bit about Burn the Witch and how badly, if at all, did the chaos mess up the album release process? Yeah, so this record was uh, mostly funded by Kickstarter. So my fans um, raised about $50,000 to put the release out. And um, it is uh, very heavily leaning on social justice issues. Um, and uh, I had a whole record release tour that was supposed to happen now and uh, through the summer and all of it's canceled and or some dates are rescheduled all right so um you say kickstarter i see that you have a patreon account now too for things um a lot of people aren't on the up and up about what the patreon process actually is in comparison so fill them in a little bit about that i've seen that you're you're getting members on that right now too yeah so the way i think of it is uh, as far as the difference between the two Kickstarter to me is a lot more transactional. Um, it's essentially people pre-ordering your album. They're purchasing merchandise in advance um, in different tiers, you know, of, of pledges as you, you know, as you go up the ladder. And um, Patreon to me is a lot more relational. Um, it is 100% like in my opinion opposite of kickstarter in that it's not transactional um you have people that pledge a really small amount of monthly support that when pulled together in a large community of people that are doing that it creates a sustainable windfall i think for artists like myself and in others who are over toured and um you know road weary um and like Kickstarter, as you can kind of see the difference, it's kind of a, um, it's a, it's a one and done thing. And, and Patreon is also ongoing. So. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So it's almost more like a membership more it than. Is. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. a membership and a tribe and um, it's super cool. It, it's kind of like a, it's, I think it's a lot more intimate. Um, now that being said, I'll probably do another Kickstarter um in 2021 for another record later on down the road so awesome yeah well I, I see you're on the uh, green couch so the green couch sessions have been absolutely hilarious especially the tiger king one i about i about peed myself Oh my so, God, you watched it? That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> so have you had a good response with that? Because I, I know a lot of artists are doing like live videos and stuff and my fear with it, it's a great idea, but so many people are wanting to participate and there's so many artists doing it. it are you finding the audiences are getting stretched thin or are you getting a good response? The internet is overly saturated now with artists that are trying to live stream and I, I posted something the other day about this very thing because we're doing the live streams the same backdrop this is the same green couch this is the same log cabin walls that are in in my house and i'm doing it you know for every live stream and nothing's really there's really no journey to post about like we're all home nothing's exotic anymore life is not exciting every single day we are home and like I'm used to being in a different bed every night and, you know, getting on planes and being in different countries and, and states and, you know, crisscross applesauce all over the world. So it's, you know, it's definitely, it definitely feels like the, 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 the thing that I miss most is the, the part of, um, the part of this job that connects me to my fans um, that deep solidarity that you get with a, a live audience who really 
in that magic moment is connecting with you with what you're saying and there and you can vis visibly watch and spiritually feel them finding a piece of themselves in your story based on the response and that is the the powerful thing about music and the way it connects people especially in a live situation and i am missing that right now that was long-winded <laughs> <laughs> no, you're fine. I mean, it actually kind of brings me into one of my other questions. I was going to um, ask when you're out on the road, what's your favorite part? Um, so you kind of just went into that. And so what's your least favorite parts of touring? I mean, other than, you know, tour buses catching on fire and stuff. So, <laughs> Right. Um, I think my least favorite part about touring is the time that I have to spend away from my family and, um, you know, all the drama associated with touring being tired all the time, that, that kind of gets old. Uh, let's see, you've got to go on the Melissa Etheridge cruise. I just actually did an interview with um, Melissa last Friday. Um, she's super cool. So what was your favorite part of that experience? Like how, how did that all go? It was great. Um, I think uh, Melissa is one of the most um, kind and uh, real artists that I that I have had the pleasure of meeting um and I love that um that she doesn't let anything or anyone get in the way of her like authentically enjoying the music and having fun right. um, and it shows in all of her interactions in the way she walks and the way she interacts with her fans and the way she is on stage um and I loved getting to see that. And that was an inspiration for me because, you know, I'm not in a place where I have, you know, 40 people to do all the jobs that need to be done. And I get overwhelmed with that business side of, of what it takes to make this work. And so to see someone like Melissa be able to um, just, just have fun with it and, and it's so pure and it's so, um, it's, so, it's just great. And between that and just getting to meet, you know, so many new fans and, and connect with so many other artists, um, it was a great experience. Uh, this one was actually pretty cool with Melissa too. So everyone's going to be sitting there doing her or trying to do her useless talent, but do you have like some weird, strange, useless talent that not many people know about? Strange, useless talent. Um, I don't know about strange and useless. Um, I, I am, uh, discovering that I have a bit of a green thumb, so I am slowly becoming a crazy plant lady. Um, so that, that is, I guess that's strange. <laughs> so talk about your creative process. Has it evolved over the years or does it just go with the flow? Is it random or do you have like a schedule of how you come up with a song or an album? Um, yeah, I, I think, um, my creative process has absolutely had an evolution over the years. Um, especially with this, this new record, um, I think it's the, the most authentic that I've ever been in my writing and in my creative process. Um, and, uh, I think to me, there's, there's two, there's two Sarah's there's Sarah before the bus fire. And then there's Sarah after the bus fire. And I think, um, the, the version of myself that I have become now, um, is, is, is so focused on using my platform to plant positive seeds of change. And that affects my creative process because when I think about what I'm going to say or what, or what's important to the world to hear, like I, I dive deep into those, those issues and I want, I want to create things that make people think or that make people feel uncomfortable without being heavy handed. Um, so always have an idea. I always have, uh, I always have some, some kind of something that, that fires me up that I, that I want to say. Gotcha. Sorry. My little thing was trying to record. Okay. So the floor is yours. So, um, if there's anything you want to shout out, if you were wanting to play a song, talk about your album, talk about your future plans, whatever you want to do. Um, if you have any things you want me to 
specifically ask, but either way, I mean, it's all yours now. Okay, cool. Well, yeah. Um, would love for you to check out my new record, Burn the Witch, and you can head over to sarahpeacockmusic.com. Check out the merch store. There's all kinds of goodies over there, fun swag to check out. Follow me on Facebook, subscribe to YouTube. There's a Patreon membership you can check out too if you want. And um, I would love to play a song for my new record if you'd like Awesome if you'd, uh, to hear it. So this song is called Keep Quiet. It's about family secrets. A long time ago, daddy learned it from a master. His father taught him well as a Southern Baptist pastor. Dead man's secrets bottom from the pages. Pictures of his first bride, don't know what her name is. Five minutes on the phone, we just talk about the weather. He avoids the truth, but he don't know any better. And brother's getting married to a beautiful man. But daddy never stop, no one knows. Keep quiet. Quiet. It's really a terrible thing to be caught in a spirally rain. And this frightening song that we sing. Keep quiet. Keep quiet. baggage not to be traveling now she's 85 and she ain't packing it mouth shut tight but there aren't any problems because if she doesn't talk then she doesn't have to solve them she takes it out of mama death grip on a grudge and once she's been drinking it doesn't take much silence cuts deeper than any of her words and it ain't mama's fault but mama still gets hurt yeah mama still gets hurt round and round it all goes it's written in genetic code and where it'll stop no one Away home from Camelton. Been two weeks gone, and he thought he'd stop at Wells and have him a drink before he went on to her. And he always said hello. He said, Hi, what's doing? Whoa, 
said, sit down, I got some bad news that's gonna hurt. Said, I'm your best friend and you know that's right. But your young bride ain't home tonight. Since you've been gone, she's been seen that a heinous boy said. He got mad and he saw it. And he said, boy, don't you lose your head. Cause to tell you the truth, I've been with him. And girling. So. <laughs> Thank you so much for interviewing me and um, for all that you're doing and y'all stay safe and all that good stuff and um, stay healthy. Absolutely. Same to you. Thank you again so much. Of course. Thank you. We'll talk to you soon. Have a good Bye. one.